Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, continuing on with the 31 days of Fabooween, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're getting down to the final countdown here. Um, you know, October did go by pretty quick, and uh, these videos have gone by pretty quickly. I hope I'm not killing you guys with these uploads. Um, I know I'm kind of banging them out pretty quickly so sorry about that but obviously they're on my channel they're all on a playlist and they're pretty easy to uh, go back and watch so yeah but we're going to continue on today again getting down to the nitty-gritty on the uh october movie horror fun stuff or whatever and today i'm going to be talking about the final girls which i had never seen before i had never heard of until more recently and I really enjoyed this film, and I cannot wait to talk about it today with you guys here. But before I go any further, if anyone would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series or a cartoon or a comic book or a video game or music, uh, random commentaries or thoughts or discussions or streams or whatever you guys want to see me tackle here on the channel that is what the paid request is set up for so again if you are interested in that click on the link down below send it in and i will get to it as soon as i possibly can and for those that have sent in paid requests before thank you guys i appreciate it it means that you guys actually care about what i say and do here on the channel and you want to see me do some different things. And it does motivate me to keep wanting making videos. So it's a win-win for everybody. You get what you want. I get what I want. Everybody goes home happy. Just like they used to say at Blockbuster. But yes, The Final Girls. Again, um, I heard about this movie more recently. A little while ago. I actually paid request. Rembo Ref for Life wanted me to do a reaction to a... Uh, movie trailer compilation i believe he put it together and the two two of the movies that really stuck out from that compilation was this movie and willie's wonderland which i will be getting to later down in the week here i do want to check that one out and do a review for you guys but those two really stuck out in my mind i really enjoyed the trailer you, Some of you commented on that video. I believe it might have been a live commentary, if I'm not mistaken. It might have been live. Um, but people told me that the movie was good. So I'm like, all right, cool. I figured, you know what? I'll save it for October. I'll save it for Halloween. It's that kind of movie. So it's appropriate to do it that way. And um, this movie is on Tubi for free for another week. At the end of the month, it's going away. So... Uh, if you want to check this movie out for free, download the Tubi app. Shameless plug, <laughs> it's on there. Um, but yeah, this was very well done. Now, the plot of this film is there is a young lady played by Tasia Formiga. Now, Tasia Formiga is Vera Formiga's younger sister. Vera Formiga, of course, was uh, Norma Bates in the Bates Motel TV series. She was also in The Departed. And more recently, she was in The Many Saints of Newark as the younger version of Tony Soprano's mother, Olivia, which she killed it in that movie. Um, her mother has passed away, and her mother is the lady from Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. I'm watching the movie. I'm like, oh, that's her. She was uh, Freak Show's wife when in Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle when their truck or their car breaks down. And Freak Show fix it. Freak Show is actually played played by cannot talk played by Christopher Maloney from Law and Order. Um, and she's like, "Are you boys gonna fuck me or what?" That lady, she plays the mom of this girl, and I thought she did pretty good. I definitely need to review the Harold and Kumar movies at some point. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what I think of those, but anyway. Um, her mom in the '80s and the early '90s was an actress. She was in a slasher movie called Camp Bloodbath, which is this big, like, cult hit. And unfortunately, the movie opens and she gets killed in a car accident. Excuse me. So it's three years later, and 
uh, Tasia Formiga's character and her friends are just trying to live life, and she's trying to move forward with the death of her mother. And one of the friends is having a screening of Camp Bloodbath for the anniversary of the movie. It also happens to be the anniversary of her mother's death. So she agrees to go there and see the movie. Um, during the film, there is a freak accident involving marijuana and alcohol, which causes a giant fire. Uh, all the exits are blocked, and her character, Max is her name, and her friends run towards the movie screen. They go through it, and they enter the world of the movie. And they cannot get out. They're stuck in a time loop. Everything repeats itself if they don't follow the plot of the movie, which is going to the summer camp, dealing with this killer, and trying to get away. So they decide to try and change the rules and change the movie and outsmart the killer and get away with everybody intact, but it doesn't go exactly as planned. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, if you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. This was very, very fun. It was very smart. It was well written. Um, and it is a very nice tribute to the slasher films of particularly the 80s, but it does have that scream vibe to it, so it can kind of apply to the ones in the 90s as well. But I highly recommend this movie. I don't want to give too much away because you need to check this out for yourselves. But again, I know I keep harping on this, keep beating the proverbial dead horse, but this was a very well done film. Uh, this came out in 2015. Again, I didn't even know it came out um, until more recently. I heard nothing about this movie. Now, I'm from again, I'm familiar with the lead girl, Tasia Formiga, who, by the way, is really, really cute. Um, unfortunately, she's married. <laughs> I'm really joking. You know, best of luck to her and her husband. But she is super cute. I'm just putting that out there. And her sister is, uh, Vera is gorgeous as well, so... They had the good genes in the family, I guess. I'm only joking around. But I didn't even know that this movie was a thing until I saw the trailer a little while ago. But if you're like me and you're a big fan of slasher movies, slasher movies are my favorite horror films. Um, I'm sure most people know that about me. <laughs> um, it's not really that hard to figure out when you can't see it in the frame here. but. Uh, I got, you know, Freddy and Jason over there in that corner. Um, I think that's the only stuff. Yeah, the, the two action, the three, excuse me, the three action figures, the Freddy doll and the movie maniacs, Freddy and Jason are in that corner. Um, the Halloween, you can't see it, it's out of frame, but the Halloween Blu-ray sets up there. Actually, you could kind of see some of the remnants of the Halloween DVD collection. So again, I think most people know that the slasher movies are my favorite, and we haven't really had a good one in a long time. Um, you know, in the seemingly endless supply of remakes and reboots and reimaginings and backdoor reboots and pointless sequel, Halloween Kills, and a legacy sequel, Halloween Kills, and TV show spinoffs and all this other shit. It was refreshing to watch this movie. Now, again, this movie came out in 2015. So, obviously, it's a couple few years old at this point. But, um, you know, that's the beauty part about... Back in the day, we called them video stores. But, you know, that's the beauty part about streaming services or if you can find them online for free or wherever. Uh, you know, you can go back and look at these movies that maybe went under the radar or what have you. So, yeah, but this was very, very nice. It was a very nice, refreshing look um, in the current slate of garbage that's coming out. Again, Halloween Kills. I cannot harp on that enough. Haven't seen the movie. I don't care to see the fucking movie. Maybe I'll do a rant on it anyway for you guys. It would be fun, maybe. We'll see. Anyway, it might be a surprise. Well, it wouldn't be a surprise if I already told you. Damn it. <laughs> I'm only really joking. Anyway, uh, yeah, this was a very, very nice surprise. And, uh, you know, this is definitely one that I'm going to add to the collection. I would, I would love to watch this movie again. Not right this second, but, you know, this is definitely one that I will add into the rotation of my usual 
October spooky movies, but very, very good stuff in this movie. And the cast, the cast was very fun. It was a very fun cast. I loved how, um, I'm sure they did this on purpose, but the characters in the movie are significantly older than they're supposed to be because the one dude, he looked really familiar. Um, the jock douchebag character in the film, he's actually from the TV show Workaholics. I was like, this dude looks really familiar. Now, I I know what Workaholics is. I haven't seen anything of it, but I'm like, this guy looks really familiar, and I looked it up. And, uh, yeah, he's like 40. <laughs> and this movie came out six years ago, so he would have been like 35, 36, somewhere in there when he did this film. So I, I think they did that on purpose because the lady that plays the mom, um, Malene, I think that's how you say her first name, Ackerstream, um, yeah, she's in her 40s. So, you know, I liked how they did. Now, again, that was probably the joke. I got the joke. I don't know about other people, but that was, I liked how they did that. And then the 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 real cast, you know, they they were obviously in their 20s and such you know, younger than that, maybe some of them, but no, I liked how they did that. And again, I'm sure they did that on purpose as an inside joke, because even now it's like, okay, they're in high school, but they're 30. Like, it's weird. <laughs> you know, like in Ferris Bueller, Alan, I don't remember how old uh, Matthew Broderick was, but Alan Ruck was like 30 when he did Ferris Bueller. Um, but he looked really young. So they definitely did that on purpose, which is cool. But the cast is a lot of fun. The The movie characters, you know, obviously that's how those roles were written, is to just have fun and, and be stereotypical. And it definitely has that. This movie definitely has the tropes. And, you know, the people that wrote this obviously were huge fans of these movies. And it's a, it's a nice take on how they did that. Um, you know, they kind of did scream, but in a little bit of a different way, which was nice, but they all did fine. Um, the, the, the real cast all did fine. Uh, Alexander Ludwig is also in the movie. He was in Grown Ups 2 as David Spade's son. He was also in Lone Survivor. He was on the, I think it's called Vikings. I don't know of the show, but I think he was on that. It might be over at this point. But he did fine. Again, Tasia Formiga did great. She obviously carried the movie on her shoulders. You know, she did awesome in it. Um, the other girl that was her friend, the really pretty girl, that's actually, because I'm looking at her and I'm like, she looks familiar. It's actually Nina Dubrov from Vampire Diaries. I've never seen Vampire Diaries. I just know what it is. And Kevin Williams, speaking of Scream, Kevin Williamson actually created that series. So maybe I need to go watch it now. I don't know. But Nina DeBrove was one of the leads on Vampire Diaries. And I'm I'm like looking at her. I'm like, how old is she? Because she looks, I mean, about my age. She's only a couple years older than me. But she looks, I mean, she's ab absolutely phenomenal looking. She's stunning. Um, and then uh, the it, little fun fact, the douchebag dude in the movie and the uh, Paula, the girl that was supposed to kill the villain, they're actually married in real life. They met on this film and started dating, and now they're married. So, hey, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, good stuff. But everyone did fine. The cast did fine. The uh, The cinematography and the production values and the set design all looked good. They were obviously going for that 80s slasher movie look. And I love how they call it Camp Bloodbath. That's cool. I like how the killer is supposed to look like Jason, but the mask is different. And the fact that he uses the machete is good. Um, you know, again, no weird editing or shaky cam or any of that. You know, they definitely filmed it in the old style, which again, really, really helps the movie. Um, you know, the only, the two issues that I have with this film, and I think it's the issues that most people have. Number one, the CGI. There was just such a huge abundance of CGI in this film, um, particularly the opening car crash. You know, you could have got stunt people to do that. Now, I'm sure the budget for this movie wasn't that big because this actually, and no wonder, 
it passed by me because it only had a limited theatrical run and then it went straight to uh on demand it was a video on demand title before streaming completely took over because you have to remember 2015 you didn't have all the shit that we have now you basically only had netflix and hulu we didn't have all this other shit but anyway no wonder it passed by but you know they definitely could have spent a little bit of the budget and instead of putting it towards shitty cg they should have put it towards the uh some of the stunts and like the opening car car crash could have been done with practical um some of the kills could have been done with practical and that kind of leads into the other problem. I think the biggest problem that this movie has, it's PG-13. Now, that had to be done. That was a studio mandate. I was reading into it. It had to be a PG-13. But I think in the long run, it kind of hurts the movie because the majority of the slasher films that came out in the 80s, actually probably all the slasher films that came out in the 80s, were rated R. It's just how it was back then. It was you didn't have you know, the luxury of doing a PG-13 slasher film. Um, and the, some of the, and honestly, the a lot of the ones that are PG-13 that are slasher movies suck. Like Cry Wolf, <laughs> which is not really a slasher film. But I'll get to that movie at some point. Um, maybe if I have time, I'll review it this month. I uh, Maybe, we'll see. But anywho, the PG-13 rating does hurt the movie. Um, because what made those movies work was obviously the kills. Like, the kills are in this movie, but they're pretty much bloodless. There's not really a lot of blood in this movie. And I think if you really wanted to do it right, it should have been rated R because you should have had the over-the-top kills like Friday the 13th and Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street and so on and so forth. I get you know, the whole Nightmare on Elm Street being a slasher movie is debatable, but I guess it is <laughs> because they call Freddy the Springwood slasher. But anywho, um, so I do think that hurt the film big time. Was it was PG thirteen, and also the fact that it had horrible CG. Even like when the the accident happens that causes them to go into the movie, like the alcohol that comes out of the bottle is cg it's like you couldn't have got a shot of alcohol just like or water they could have, they probably would have just used water you couldn't get a shot of water going somewhere or you couldn't get like fake you know a fake cigarette or ashes to fall like i don't know but i think those were the two biggest things that hurt the problem now the cast is well done the music is good the the score and the 80s songs that they use actually earlier songs as well they do flashback scenes in black and white. That's well done. It's self self referential. If I could talk, articulate, Bob. I don't know why my one eye is closed on my one eye, Willie. But you know, other than that, the movie really works. Everything else works in the movie's favor. It's just the rating, the PG thirteen rating, really hurt it. I I I would say. But again, that was a studio mandate, and also the CG again. You can do a car crash with stunts and stunt people. That's what these guys get paid to do. This is what they, these guys know how to do, it's what they're trained to do. Again, you could have someone smoke a cigarette and put ashes on the ground and just make it look natural. You can have wa you know, alcohol, water, pour down something. Um, you know, They did it for many, many years practically. You could do practical fire like they did for many years. Um, so those are really the two things that hurt the film. But other than that, you know, there, there is one fuck bomb, which is nice. And the line is really good. I do really like how they did that. And I don't want to give that away. But at the end of the day, this was really well done. I was very impressed with this film. It was a nice love letter. It was a nice tribute to the 80 slasher films. I just wish they went full out balls of the wall and got that hard R rating. We could have blood and guts and all that fun stuff. But again, the people that spend the money make the decisions. And that's just unfortunately how it works. But like I said, this is still on Tubi for another week. If you guys want to check it out, highly recommend it. It is out on Blu-ray. I'm sure if you shop around, you can get a good deal on it. 
but this is really fun. I'm definitely going to add this to the collection and enjoy it for many years to come, and you guys should definitely check it out as well. And I know they said they wanted to do a sequel. I think it's probably too late at this point, but it would have been nice if they would have did a sequel to this because you could honestly make multiple sequels and still have it be fun. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a little too late for that now. But that's just, unfortunately, the way that it goes in the big city, as my grandmother always says. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of The Final Girls. Uh, next up, we're going to keep the uh, 31 Days of Fabulween going. And, uh, you know, we'll have some more fun for the last couple of days here of October. So until then, as always, take care, guys. Thank you for, thank you for watching, and we'll talk soon. See you.